All right, so lesson 6-1, this is going to be lesson 6-1, and if this is part two, part two of a lecture, okay? And this one starts with example four. So example four is uh, distribute over subtraction, okay? So here we want to use the distributive property to expand this expression. So we have a negative 4w minus... 7 times 5, okay? Now, when we are doing this distributive property, you have to make sure you need to um, watch your signs. You need to watch your signs. So, here, this first expression, in this expression, the first term, that is a negative 4w. The second term is also a negative 7, okay? So now when we use the distributive property, the way you're going to show your work is just to use your arrows. So we're going to take that 5 and we're going to multiply it times everything inside the parentheses, okay? So we've got 5 times negative 4w, that's going to give us negative 20w. And then we have a 5 times negative 7, that's negative 35. Negative 35. Is everybody clear? That's pretty much it. That's how you, you use your distributed property. The big deal is that you must be careful with your signs. So example B, we want to do the same thing. We have 4 times the quantity, negative 3x minus 8. Okay? And again... Be careful of your signs. So the first term here is a negative 3x. The second term is a negative 8. And we're going to distribute that 4 throughout the entire expression. So what is 4 times negative 3x? Negative 12x. Negative 12x. Remember, you need to make sure you know your integer rules. So, this is going to be a negative 12x. And then we have 4, positive 4, times a negative 8, which is negative 32. Negative 32. And that's all there is to it. All right, example 5 is distribute negative numbers. Is the process different? No. No, process is the same. Okay? So, we are going to... Um, be careful of the signs, and you can put, you can um, highlight yours, or you can put, use your circles and your squares, okay? So we've got a negative 8y and a positive 10, and we're going to distribute the negative 6, okay? So that negative 6 gets multiplied times everything inside the parentheses. So, okay. So here we have a negative 6 times a negative 8y. Negative times a negative is a positive. positive. And 6 times 8 is 48. So this is going to be 48y. And that's a positive. Is everybody clear? And then we've got a negative 6 times a positive 10, negative 60. All right. We're going to do this next one. So again, we want to be careful with the, the signs. So we have a negative 8 times a quantity. Remember, quantity means, and this is the, the next thing I'm going to say is in parentheses. So negative 8 times a quantity, 5x minus 9. We're going to, the first term is a positive 5x. The second term is a negative 9. And we're going to distribute the negative 8 throughout the parentheses, which means we're going to multiply that negative 8 times everything inside the parentheses. So, negative 8 times positive 5x is negative 40x. Very good. And then we've got a negative 8 times a negative 9. That's going to be a positive 72. And that's it. The next application is a, ge a geometry application, and we want to know 
we want to work with perimeter. We want to know which quadrilateral has the greater perimeter when x is equal to 4. First, I want to ask you, what is perimeter? Let's write down the definition. So the perimeter is the distance, yes, the distance around the figure. And if we want to find the distance around the figure, we just have to add them all up, right? Okay. So here we've got quadrilateral 1 and quadrilateral 2. Here's quadrilateral, quadrilateral 1 and here's quadrilateral 2. And notice they're not just numbers. They're expressions, algebraic expressions. So we want to add those all up, right? So we want to add... This side plus this side plus this side plus this side. You with me? All right. So we're going to add up all these sides. Okay, so let's start with this one down here. We've got 2 times negative 3x plus 24. That's that one side. And then we're going to add this one. So plus 4x. And we're going to add this one up here plus 3x, and then add this one over here, plus 10. So now, what is the first thing I need to do to simplify my expression? So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of these parentheses. And so we are going to multiply that 2 times everything inside the parentheses using the distributive property. Okay? And remember, again, we want to make sure we're watching the signs. So this is a negative 3x, and the next term is a positive 24. Okay? So we're going to distribute that 2 throughout the parentheses. Okay? So 2 times a negative 3x is a positive 2 times a negative 3x is a negative 6x. Good. And then we've got 2, positive 2, times a positive 24 is a positive 48. Positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. All right? And then we'll just rewrite the rest of it. Okay? So then we've got plus 4x plus 3x plus 10. And now we can use our shapes and our, uh, our shapes, uh, circles and squares and triangles to identify our like terms. So what are, what, what are the, the like terms we have here? So I'm going to go ahead and use squares for those. So we've got a negative 6x, we've got a positive 4x, and we have a positive 3x. And those other two, what are those things called? Constance. Constance. Very good. So this is a positive 48, and this is a positive 10. So now I can combine my like terms. Okay? So a negative 6x plus 4x is negative 2x. Negative 2x. So negative 2x. And then negative 2x plus 3x is equal to what? Positive 1x. So this is going to be just x. Is everybody clear with that? And then we've got positive 48 plus 10, and that's going to give us what? That's positive 58. Now, in order for us to find the perimeter, we have to go back up here. It says which quadrilateral has the greater, greater perimeter when x is equal to 4. So here, we have to put a 4 in there for x. Is everybody with me on that? So we're going to substitute, and then we're going to simplify. So 4 plus 4, uh, 58 is 62. And because we don't have it feet, inches, yards, or whatever up there, you're just going to say 62 units. So now we have to do the same thing for quadrilateral 2. 
And again, we're just going to add up all the sides, okay? So, when we add them up, we've got this side plus this side plus this side plus this side. It's just adding, okay? So we have 4 times the quantity 6x minus 21. Then we're going to add 2x and add 3x and then add 11. And then we can simplify that. All right, so we're going to use the distributive property right here. So we're going to take that 4 and we're going to distribute it throughout the parentheses. So, oh, and I'm going to highlight my signs, my terms, so you don't get, so we don't get messed up and make sure we stay straight here, okay? So, 4 times 6x is 24x. Good. 24x. And then 4 times negative 21 is negative 84. Very good. So, plus 2x plus 3x plus 11. The next step is to identify the like terms. So I heard you guys talking, and I'm going to go ahead and use the squares for the x's. So we've got 24x, that's a positive, right? Then we've got a positive 2x, and we've got a positive 3x, right? Oops, let me scooch that over a little bit. All right, and then we've got a negative 84, and we've got a positive 11. So now we can put our, our like terms together. Now we're going to combine our like terms. All right, so we've got 24x plus 2x. That's going to give me 26x. X. And then 26x plus 3x is 29x. So that's Pos yes, positive 29x. And then we've got a negative 84 plus 11. What's that? Negative 73. Negative 73. And there's the expression that's going to help me get my perimeter, right? So now I need to put the 4 in for the x. Is everybody clear? So we have 29 times 4 minus... 73. All right, and so let's take out our calculator. So we've got 29 times 4. That's 116, and I'm going to write it down, 116. 116 minus 73 minus 73, and that's going to give us 43 units. So now we have all the information we need to answer our question. So which one has the greater perimeter? Very good. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to say greater than. Is everybody clear?